So first, I would like to thank Camilo uh, uh, for the opportunity uh, uh, for me to give a talk. Uh, so today, I'm going to uh, going to talk about the, uh, a reason to work with uh, Francesco uh, Concerto and uh, Hui Yuan about uh, uh, global well poseness for the uh, 2D uh, Musca problem. So let me first introduce the uh, the problem. So the Musca problem can be uh, two phase or one phase. So let's consider uh, incompressible fluids. Uh, in a porous medium. So uh, you, you decompose the domain into, into two parts with an interface. So the interface is a free boundary. So it depends on T. And this is uh, the omega 1T and omega 2T. And in omega 1T, the density is uh, uh, given by rho 1, it's a constant. And here you have density rho 2. So the fluid satisfies uh, the famous Darcy's law. Uh, which, be, which is given by the following uh, equation. So mu over kappa times ui is equal to uh, minus a gradient uh, pi minus uh, zero, zero uh, g times uh, ui. So last term on rise is uh, obviously the gravity uh, term. And the first term is given by the pressure, the gradient of pressure. And this U is the velocity of the fluid. So we assume that the, the fluid is uh, uh, incompressible. So the divergence of U is equal to zero. So this is in, in omega i. And i is equal to zero. So we also assume that uh, there's no uh, surface tension. So that the pressure is continuous across the boundary. So that means uh, P1 is equal to P2 of sigma T. So the, the fluid is transported by the, uh, the density is transported by the, uh, the velocity. So, so we have the following equation for the velocity as well. So partial T of Ui uh, plus Ui times gradient Ui is equal to Okay, so, so we have this, uh, these three equations. Uh, so the, the equation we consider is the, uh, is the one phase problem. So we assume that uh, in omega one, we have vacuum. So rho one is equal to, uh, uh, P is equal to zero, and also uh, rho one is equal to zero. So we consider this a one phase problem. Assuming that uh, rho one is equal to zero, And also P minus So in our case, uh, the equation is called a one phase uh, Moscow problem. And it is also equivalent to the, to the vertical Hadeshaw equation. So as I said before, so this, this, uh, uh, this system describes the, the incompressible uh, fluid uh, in a homogeneous porous medium. Okay, so so let me uh, write down the, the, the interface. So to study this equation, it is equivalent to study the uh, the in interface of the, of the problem. So let me denote this uh, 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 sigma t to be the interface, the free boundary. So we, again, I use the picture. So. Uh, you know that if the, the velocity is uh, in the tangential direction, uh, then the interface does, does not move. So that means we need to decompose this velocity in the, in the vertical direction and also the tangential direction. So suppose this is the velocity, and we decompose this into the into the, the vertical direction and also the, the tangential direction. So suppose that the interface is given by y is equal to f uh, t. 
So this is in a 2D, so X is in R and Y is also in R. And then uh, we know that the, the normal direction can be written as uh, uh, minus F prime X. So you can also normalize it by divide by the is less. So we got this uh, unit normal direction. And with uh, some simple simple computation, you can see that the uh, the component in the vertical direction is exactly given by u dot capital N X. So we can write on the equation of the, the interface. So F T is exactly equal to uh, u dot uh, n x. Okay, so if you can if you can uh, express this u in terms of f, uh, then we can solve equation for f, right? So how to do that? Uh, let's go back to the this uh, Darcy's law. So in the in a one uh, in a one phase problem, we can write this Darcy's law as follows. So mu divided by rho times u is equal to minus gradient p uh, minus zero, zero, 001. So well, here I uh, normalize this uh, gravitational constant to be one. And this rho is the density and the mu is the viscosity constant. So if you define a uh, phi, and we also have an incompressible condition. So the variance of u is equal to zero. And uh, uh, that uh, p p one is equal to p two is equal to uh, is on, on on the on the free boundary, so that means p is equal to zero on the, on the boundary. So p is equal to zero on the boundary. That's a silly question. Is the, the interface is two dimensional and the and the whole space? Uh, the interface is one dimension. Uh, okay. So the domain is two dimension. Okay. So. But be you zero comma zero one? Do you mean zero? Oh, one? sorry. This should be zero comma zero one. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. So let me define uh, phi to be uh, p plus one. Uh, then because uh, the right side can be written as uh, mu over kappa times u is equal to Minus gradient of phi, right? And now, because you use divergence free, you can take the divergence on both sides. You can see that phi is a harmonic function. This implies that the plus phi is equal to zero. And also on the boundary, uh, phi is equal to p plus y, but uh, p is equal to zero on the boundary. So that means phi is equal to y on the boundary. So phi is equal to ftx. Okay, so that means if you can solve this uh, uh, this Laplace equation with this uh, uh, Dirichlet boundary condition, uh, then we can find this phi, and then uh, if you have phi, uh, then you can write down the uh, use this uh, uh, this equation to to express the right side. Right. So uh, so that gives you the, the following uh, equation. So let me denote uh, the following. So, uh, so for simplicity, let me uh, write down the following equation. So Laplace P is equal to zero in omega F. And also phi is equal to F, uh, phi is equal to G, say, on the uh, free boundary. So here I use uh, this uh, uh, script F to indicate that the boundary is given by F, okay? So, uh, and we also assume that the phi is in L2. So with this, uh, let me denote uh, G, uh, small, small fg to be a partial n of the phi. Then this equation can be right into the following form. So we got, the following uh, interface uh, uh, equation, so partial TF is equal to uh, minus some constant rho over mu times uh, GF actomic, uh, uh, GF actomic. Okay. 
So uh, instead of uh, uh, studying the original equation, you can just look at this uh, this contour equation. Right? So partial TF is equal to minus rho uh, mu GFF. So uh, you can easily see that this one right side is actually a, a elliptic operator. So this is a elliptic operator of, of uh, first order. And when uh, f is equal to uh, zero, uh, then it's uh, gf f on g is exactly the fractional Laplace uh, of order uh, one half. So let me denote this by uh, lambda g. So lambda is the, the square root of minus Laplace. Okay, so, uh, so let me give you some examples. The first one is that when f is a constant or uh, just a zero. In that case, this operator is, uh, as I said before, this gf small g is the, the fractional plus. So this can be written as uh, the uh, as follows. So that's equal to minus one over two pi times integral from negative infinity to uh, to positive infinity of the second order difference gx plus x prime plus gx minus uh, x prime minus the two times gx divided by x prime square gx prime. So this is the case uh, when uh, f is a constant. Uh, you can also write down this. Uh, uh, so this operator is called a directly to normal operator. Uh, so this is the case when the, the boundary is flat. So when the boundary is, uh, is above, above radius one, uh, you can also write down uh, explicitly. So in a case uh, v1, if the boundary is uh, uh, above, above radius, radius 1, then this operator can be written as, uh, as follows. So it's 1 over uh, 8 pi times integral from negative pi to pi of uh, gx plus x pi plus gx minus x pi minus 2g x pi. Uh, 2gx divided by sine x over 2, x prime over 2 uh, squared, then dx prime. Okay, but in general, if you have a, a, a general f, uh, there's no explicit representation of the, this, uh, this, this operator. Uh, so uh, we are interested in the, in the dynamics of the, the free boundary in, the, uh, in this work. So let me give you uh, some some literatures uh, results in the in the. In the <laughs> so this problem has been has been studied uh, by many people uh, for for both uh, two phase and one phase equations. Uh, so uh, when the initial data is very small, say uh, if f f zero is very close to to constant, uh, then we have we have a small data row of points. So first, notice that uh, the equation satisfies the following uh, scaling. So if for ftx uh, is a solution, uh, then if you define f lambda tx to be one over lambda times f lambda t and then lambda x, uh, then this f lambda is still a solution. So that means uh, the Lipschitz space, for example, is a scritable space for, for this equation. Lipschitz space. Uh, is a critical space. Uh, 
So uh, also in uh, uh, in D dimensional space, you can also consider, uh, for example, uh, uh, solid spaces. So H D minus one over two plus one. So this is invited into uh, this is uh, uh, barely invited into your uh, Lipschitz. Uh, in this R, R, D, R with R, D minus one uh, space because the interface is uh, one dimensional uh, less the, the, the dimension. Uh, you can also consider the Gaussian space as well. So there are many working in this direction. Uh, uh, the first uh, small data global we upon this is probably by uh, Seagull and uh, uh, Kafflish. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, then there are results by uh, one phase. Uh, I think this is for two phase. Okay. Yes. And also there are results by, by Diago uh, Cordoba in 2017 with uh, uh, Francesco uh, Consado. And later by uh, Asher and uh, Matyok. Uh, and more recently, uh, the work by uh, uh, Constantine. Uh, Constantine. Uh, Show me the code. And also, uh, the code. So these uh, this work are all about uh, small data. So you assume that the initial data is very close to uh, constant, then you can prove the global, uh, global existence of the solutions. So there are also uh, some interesting work when the, the data is not so small, but not large. So they call this so what to be- what happens after, after a long time? Uh, after a long time, I think because of dissipation, the solution should converge to constant. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, so, so, so you're in the case where you can't write the, the Dirichlet de Neumann operator explicitly, right? So actually, you can, but it's complicated. Yes. Okay, I'll, I'll write on. Because I, I think in some of these works, is, isn't it the case that, like you have a, you have an explicit form for the for whatever the operator is, right? But in that case too. In this case too. Okay, it's yeah. just not very useful. So it's useful, context. but it's complicated. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Actually, I will write on in 2D, you can explicitly write on, but in 3D or higher, it's, it's complicated. Okay. There's no explicit uh, uh, kernel. Okay. Yeah. I mean, people have worked with that formula. Yeah. 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 Okay. So, uh, as I said before, there are also some results when the data is not so small, but not so large. So, these are called median data. Uh, in Lipschitz for uh, uh, Wiener algebra space. So the Wiener algebra space is basically you take the Fourier transform, uh, then you multiply this by uh, C. Or K depending on it's periodic or non periodic, then take the summation of integral. Okay. So, for example, you can take the free transfer uh, expansion, then take the absolute value and multiply by K, and then you take the sum. So, this norm is, uh, is, is bigger than the Lipschitz norm. So, this space is, uh, is, uh, is a, lot, uh, it's a smaller space. Uh, so, uh, they are work by uh, uh, Constantine, Cordoba, uh, Gonzalo, and also uh, Bob Strait uh, in terms of 13 and also 16. Uh, and also some other work by Gonzalo and uh, his operators. Uh, in 2019. And more recently by uh, Camero in 2019 and uh, 20. 
so these are results about uh, medium data. So not so small, not so large. Okay, so uh, there are also a result when the data is so large, you can get the, get the, the local where person is. For medium data, you have a global? For medium data, you have global, yes, yes. So that's media data, uh, global reports. And if uh, the data is large, arbitrary large, you can get the local reports. Uh, so, uh, so more recently, there are some book about uh, small data uh, in critical solar spaces. As I wrote before, you can consider this uh, HD minus one over two plus one. This is the critical surface space. And you can get uh, local, uh, you can get uh, uh, local web of solution, but uh, even if uh, uh, these data are small in the critical space, they can be large in the digital space. <laughs> so these are, I think, uh, local web of solutions. So the, the last thing I want to talk about is, so you can also consider the equation uh, when the, the interface, the free boundary is not given by a graph. So you can consider uh, something like this. So you have uh, the omega one is the inside and omega two is outside. And you have row one, row two uh, in these uh, two different sub, sub domains. So they are work by Xin uh, uh, Chan. Uh, in 1983, and also uh, Constantine and Pew. Also in 1983. Uh, they, they consider the case when the, the interface is very close to the uh, a, a circle. In that case, they can prove the, uh, the global opposites for solutions. Okay, so these are about uh, where business. Uh, there are also many uh, work when people consider uh, finite time synchronicity. So finite time similarity. So uh, in a, in a two phase case, uh, uh, Diago uh, Cordoba and also Fibonacci uh, in uh, two thousand twelve, they prove that. Uh, if you have a, a stable uh, reduce, that is the, the light, the lighter fluid is above, the so lower is less than or two. And then initially, uh, this is given by graph, but with large slope. Then it is possible that uh, you can uh, turn over in the un to, to, to the unstable region. So the, the, the heavier fluid can be above this lighter uh, fluid. Uh, there's also work by Castro. Uh, and other people in 2012. So, uh, in the case of uh, one phase, uh, the, we cannot get such a scenario. So, there's no this uh, turnover scenario does not uh, does not happen. So impossible uh, for the one for the one phase problem. Does the interface also have some kind of a kink or something on the way, or what happens? Uh, the, the interface, I think, is Lipschitz, right, with large uh, slope. Am I right? Uh, okay, so what happens 
to the city. Okay, so there's uh, solutions that are, they become real analytic instantly, mm -hmm. right? Start with something smooth, uh, regular, become real analytic. This, there are solutions that turn to the unstable regime and they break down the smoothness break down. Smoothness break down. Yeah, yeah. Some kind of kinker or something like uh, that. No, you, what we can say is not C4. So okay. <laughs> that's what we can say. Right. It's at least not C4 okay. at the moment. But there are other solutions that turn to the unstable regime. And before they break down, they remain real analytic and they come back to the stable regime. That not all solutions uh, that go to the unstable regime breaks down. I see. So are, you can continue beyond. You can you can continue beyond beyond the where, where it turns. So okay, well, since it's real analytic, yeah. and you're only losing one derivative, but you have a that you can continue the solution for a while. Some of them and some of them come back to be a graph again. And there and and there is a, a theorems of a global existence for a very large to um, Lipschitz norm. So that's also but the, for the, the two uh, to the two phase problem. For two to be problem, but with uh, so it's a small in some uh, some it's small in H three halves. Yes, yeah. but you can make the Lipschitz norm as big as you want. Yes. Okay, so you can start with an interface which has slope as large as you want. Some of them you have global existence, some of them turn, break down, and some of them turn and comes back. So there's rich priority. Yeah. Is there global opposedness if the, if the interface is monotone? Uh, uh, yes. Yes. Okay. Yes, for the two phase problem, yes. If it's monotone, then you have uh, and some certain conditions and um, and so instead of, you know, it, comes, uh, it goes like this and remains mm -hmm. like this, yes, that's, uh, that's uh, there's global existence in that case as well. And you can make the, the slope as large as you want. So is the enemy of slope which turns around? The enemy is the slope, yeah. Okay. Okay, so uh, thanks. So a few also studied like the, uh, Scratch singularity on also spread. So if you consider the wave, uh, the one phase problem, uh, if you start from something like this, uh, then eventually uh, it is possible that uh, these uh, two uh, the, the two points, two different points on the, on the interface will touch each other. So this is called. Uh, uh, so that's that's for one phrase problem. Is it still a graph? No, it's not a graph. So it, a graph. they touch each other, then it cannot be a graph. But uh, this cannot happen for the two phase problem. So this cannot happen. Uh, so another type of thing, so this is for the splash. Another type of singularity is called a, a spread singularity. That's when uh, this is not a point but a, a curve. So if you uh, if you if the interface will uh, touch each other around a curve, then this is called a spread spread singularity. And it, it has been proved that for both one phase and two phase problems, this is impossible. So yes. is touch is on an open subset? Uh, yes, touch on a, a curve, for example, you have a, a curve mm -hmm. and they touch on the Yes, on into, yes. Okay, so uh, so the reason I'm going to, uh, the, the, the result I'm going to talk about today uh, is about uh, uh, global wear positives. Uh, in the in, in Lipschitz space without any smallest uh, connection in any uh, solid space. So here's our result.
Uh, so let me formulate this as a theorem. So we consider the case when uh, sigma t is, uh, is periodic. Uh, so so suppose that the initial interface given by f0 uh, is reaches, just reaches without any smallness condition. Uh, then there exists a unique viscosity solution. F to the uh, to 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 uh, Muscat equation uh, such that this F is uh, continuous from zero to infinity times uh, T, and it is also uh, bounded in a uh, Lipschitz uh, space. So the Lipschitz norm is bound, and also uh, F T. Is in L uh, two L infinity L two space L infinity T and L two. Of course, we have the initial condition. So F zero dot is equal to F zero uh, dot, and the equation satisfied in a viscosity sense and also in the sense of uh, uh, strong solution. So, so the equation. Is what is called in L infinity T and L2 in S. And all those such solutions. In so, one thing I'm a little confused about. So, this parameterization is always a graph form. It can't, if you're going to have singularities like this, you can't always have graph. So, how do you? Yes, so it's possible, for example, you have a corner. You, know, you can have a corner, something like this. But as, as long as it's a dipshit, it's okay. Yeah, I understand that. But but he, but I thought you, you got something wasn't graphs. Oh, I'm talking about uh, graph case. So oh. This is a graph. Okay. And it always it always stays a graph. It's always it's always stays graph. Well. And also actually can prove that there's a maximum case hole. I forgot to write. So uh, so the rich is now in X at any time T. It's less than equal to the richest one at the uh, t is equal to zero. Yes. Okay. So, uh, so for, from a physics point of view, it's remarkable. If you only have one fluid and you have a graph, it does not turn. Yeah, that's what I'm, that's what I'm confused about. <laughs> but if you have a fluid which is uh, 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 lighter than the one. Yeah, so this is for two. That can turn. Yes. Okay. Okay. So, uh, so let me, uh, before I give you uh, the idea of the proof, so let me first define uh, viscosity solutions. So this is defined as usual. So you test this with smooth functions. And you can define viscosity uh, and sub solutions, uh, super sub solutions. And if uh, a solution is close, a viscous, a super solution and sub solution, then it is a viscosity uh, solution. So there is a uh, maximum principle which should which should be just. Yes, that's so the, that's the maximum principle, but uh, apparently it only works for smooth solutions. For smooth solutions. So you need to prove that it is also uh, is satisfied by viscosity. Uh -huh. So that's the yeah. principle. Uh, so definition. Of my viscosity uh, sub and super solutions. Uh, if, uh, of, uh, if F is uh, uh, upper semi continuous or lower semi continuous, depending on uh, sub and super. So also that you can find a smooth function for style. Uh, smooth. Uh, so by smooth, I mean C1 in time and C1 when in X. Okay, so C1 in time and C1 when in X. And touch this F uh, from above at some point. At 
uh, say x0, t0. Uh, then this psi should satisfy the following uh, inequality at that point. Okay. So uh, psi t is uh, less than equal to minus uh, g psi. So I take uh, this uh, uh, all the constant to be one for simplicity. And similarly, you can define this possibly uh, super solutions. And if it is both sub solution and super solution, then this is a discrete uh, solution. So to to find the existence of solutions, we use the uh, real argument. But the, the difficulty here is because the equations in the local and also cosine. We consider this a regularized equi uh, equation. Uh, given by uh, if t is equal to minus g f f times epsilon times uh, the second degree f in x. So this is a regularized equation. And you solve this equation to get uh, some solution at epsilon. And then take the limit as epsilon goes to zero. And you prove that there's a priori estimate in that space. Uniform misplate, then you can find the limit. And that's the that limit is exactly the viscosity solution of the origin equation. Okay. So uh, so uh, to find this uh, f epsilon, uh, we are going to use the fundamental solution of Laplace in uh, t times r. So in this uh, uh, periodic in x and uh, uh, r in, in y. Uh, we can write down the uh, fundamental solution of Laplace explicitly. So gxy is actually equal to one over four pi times log uh, cosine, probably cosine y minus cosine x. So you can uh, directly check that Laplace of so g is equal to minus one, uh, minus the other. Uh, okay, so uh, with this, we can write down the double layer potential. Uh, and uh, the here, one thing I need to point out is that uh, this is a Lipschitz domain. So we need to be careful about the double real potential, but uh, unfortunately, uh, this has been studied uh, a while ago by Pochetta in 84, where he proved the various uh, real potential estimates when the domain slip sheets. Uh, all right, so this uh, double real potential has been going on. Say the interface is given by f. And we take the double layer potential of uh, this function h. This is equal to minus integral on this uh, sigma. Sigma is the free boundary of a partial n x prime uh, g uh, z z prime z is equal to x x comma one. Okay, and h uh, z prime z, z prime. And then uh, with uh, this double M potential, we can uh, define this uh, directly. We can find a solution to the, this uh, 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 equation. And eventually, after some computations, uh, we will omit the, uh, these computations. So we can write on this uh, GF uh, act on G. So in the 2D case, very lucky because we have this uh, explicit uh, Green's uh, fundamental solution of the plus. Uh, this can be written explicitly. So this is a one over four pi times the integral of the torus of uh, uh, sine x, x minus six prime plus hyperbolic sine fx minus fx prime times f prime x divided by uh, cosine 
h fx minus fx prime uh, minus the sign x minus x prime theta x prime dx prime. So where theta x prime is uh, given by the following formula. So theta is equal to partial x goes for one half identity minus uh, the whole of potential inverse at Okay, you first solve for theta by using this formula. Now you plug this into uh, this integral. Now you get to this uh, directly to numerical operator. Uh, and by using the, the result by, by Vachuta, we can obtain for uh, quite uh, precise and uh, quantitative estimate. For example, we can estimate the, uh, so, so by the way, this is also equal to uh, one half i minus k star. Minus one partial x So we can obtain the, 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 uh, the norm of the, the operator from L2 to L2. So this is bounded by the Lipschitz norm of F. And also we can bound this L2 norm of this directly to normal operator. Add down G by some constant, universal constant times one plus the Lipschitz norm of F square times the L2 norm of uh, gradient G. So roughly speaking, this is also uh, some first order derivative of G, right? So this is bounded by the first order derivative of G, but the constant is given by uh, this form, okay? And with this, uh, we can estimate, uh, we can get a power estimate of L2, H1, and H2 uh, norms of the uh, distribution, and eventually we can obtain the, the existence of F epsilon by using construction magnetism. Okay. <coughs> uh, by estimate by estimating uh, L2 and also H1 and H2. No. Okay, so uh, that's roughly speaking the uh, existing part. So I have like uh, uh, five, uh, seven minutes. I'll talk about the uh, uniqueness of solutions. But as Camilla pointed out, uh, if you have a certain covariant principle, then we have the uniqueness of solutions. Uh, so by comparison principle, I mean uh, if you have a sub solution and a super solution, right? So suppose that uh, F1 is a super solution and F2 is a sub solution. And we also know that initially when T is equal to zero, F2 Zero is less than equal to F1 at time zero. Uh, then the conclusion is that for any T, F2, T is less than equal to F1T. So suppose that you have this comparison principle, then certainly you have uniqueness, right? Because you, if you start from the same initial data, uh, then these two solutions must be the same. But the question is uh, the, the, whether we have the, uh, the comparison principle for these cost solutions. So for that, uh, we uh, prove. Consistency result. So that's the consistent consistency result. In the sense that if you have a big viscosity solution. So if say F is a is a viscosity solution, and uh, it is also C one one at some point, at point Z zero, 
Uh, then uh, F satisfies the equation in the classical sense at that point. Okay. At C0. And if you have this consistent result together with the, the inf tube convolution, now you can prove the comparison principle. So to prove this consistent result, uh, we, uh, we, we, uh, we, we, uh, the proof relies on the following uh, point yc or now by state. So here's the lemma, uh, the t lemma, which is the point wise. Uh, C1 alpha is it? So let me state uh, this result. So suppose that you have a uh, Lipschitz domain. So you have a Lipschitz domain uh, omega. And F is a harmonic function which vanishes on boundary. And F is Laplace F is equal to zero. Omega. In general, you know that uh, this F is only how codec moves, right? But let's assume that at some point, say at the origin, or, or origin is a uh, point on the boundary, we know that omega is uh, C11 at that point. Okay? So omega, the boundary of omega is C11. That's the origin, say, zero, zero. Uh, then the conclusion is that this F is actually C1 alpha at that point. Uh, for some small, alpha can be very small. Uh, so, uh, so to prove this uh, this result, uh, uh, let me give you some uh, some ideas of the proof. So, roughly speaking, we obtain the following inequality: so u uh, x y minus x times y dot gradient of u at that point. This, this must exist. It's best equal to some constant times x squared plus y squared alpha plus one two times the L2 norm of u uh, in, uh, in a larger uh, domain. Okay, so this is omega 2 r zero, and this is true in omega r zero. Uh, sorry, this should be this should be a, this. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. So omega R zero is the intersection of uh, of these domain with a ball radius uh, centered at uh, zero. Okay. Uh, so uh, it's not difficult to prove that under this assumption, the solution is Lipschitz by using barrier functions. So Lipschitz is, uh, is easy. Uh, it's simple. By using component baseball and also barrier functions. And uh, uh, in, 2000, uh, in 2005, uh, Kafari and, uh, and Sasa Uh, prove that uh, this uh, solution is actually uh, C1. So it's uh, uh, continuously differentiable at that point. Uh, however, for our application, because we want to prove a certain convergence of the derivative to normal operator, uh, we need a C1 alpha. Or at least the C1 d. So the, 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 the the gradient should be Dini candidate at the point. So that's why we need to we need to prove this uh, this result. Okay. So for the proof, uh, so let me just give you some uh, key steps. So the idea is uh, uh, use approximation. So we approximate uh, this domain at this point by hyperplanes. 
for your housemates on a partial omega uh, by flat uh, by flat double planes. Uh, at each scale, so at, at, at each small scale. And then we apply uh, W1P estimates uh, for boson equations and also uh, certain Hardy's inequality. And eventually we obtain the following uh, iterative uh, inequality. So the inf of any constant a and b in R of uh, uh, f minus a plus b y. So this is a linear function of the y only. We think that you're infinity norm in a smaller uh, ball of R. So this is bounded by uh, some constant c times kappa square times in of the same thing, but in uh, omega R. Okay. And the first, uh, uh, the second term, which is the CR of the first term. And uh, as long as you have this uh, inequality, you can iterate and eventually get to this in, which is actually less than equal to the last term on the right side. So this gives you the the C1 alpha, the point Y C1 alpha radio distributions. Okay, so that's all I want. To, oh, okay. So let me mention some uh, open problems. So currently we are, we are working on the, the 3D case. So in a 3D case, uh, it's uh, slightly more complicated to produce a C1 alpha estimate, but this is still doable by using the W1 uh, 3 plus epsilon uh, estimate uh, for uh, the past equations in Lipschitz domain by uh, due to uh, Jarison and Koenig. So this is only for three, so they can prove that the W1 uh, three plus epsilon for a small epsilon is, uh, is estimate. Okay, so uh, there, there are some questions I want to uh, point out. The one thing is how about the smoothness of solutions? So we prove the existence of a strong solution. So whether the solution is uh, smooth. Uh, so in general, this is uh, uh, this is no, no. So we don't have a smoothness. So you know we have a. Uh, uh, is a uh, uh, power wave operator, right? So the riser is uh, uh, elliptic, but we don't have the, the, the smoothness of solutions. So in fact, there's a reason read out by uh, Agarola, also Pato, and Stuart. It proved uh, the persistency of uh, singularity. Say so you have uh, an acute angle. So this angle is less than power two. Uh, that's for the initial data. Then this is uh, preserved for at least for some small time. So that means the solution is not, is not becoming uh, smooth immediately. Uh, so another question is what happens if this is not accurate? Say the, uh, if the Lipschitz norm is very small, if the Lipschitz norm is uh, small, Uh, so initially, the Lipschitz norm is small. Do we have the smoothness of solutions? Do we have the immediate uh, uh, regularity of solutions? All right, so that's all I want, uh, all I want to talk about. Questions? Yeah. Uh, so, so I have a couple of questions. So you put zero on, on the right hand side for the for the equation that F solves. I mean, what 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 else would I allow to what else could I put on the right hand side and have this still be true? 
Uh, yeah, I think you can put some smooth functions in the future. Yes. Yeah. Or even point ones, uh, which is point one smooth. Yeah. And then, I mean, this theorem that you've proven is, uh, I guess, not true in the in the two phase problem. It's not true in a, It's not true in the two phase problem. Yes. So, I mean, it's probably something obvious, but just where, like, what part of this doesn't work? What's different about the two phase problem that? Uh, uh, yeah, so uh, let me see. So first of all, in a two-phase problem, the, the equation is no longer this uh, partial TF is the directly to Newman. Okay. That's quite different. Yeah. Okay. And also the, the result is uh, uh, this proof is only for 2D. So as I said, for 3D, uh, you need a, a different proof. Yeah. But when the measures is greater than three, we have to <laughs> I think that the three the three D case is the, 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 the critical case. So you yeah, yeah. Uh, you must have a uniform estimate in the Lipschitz norm of that guy. Yes, yeah, so, so we have a, if the initial data is if the initial data is Lipschitz norm, we have uniform in epsilon. So is this an effect of the maximum principle? This is uh, this is the, due to maximum principle because you have this viscosity. Term and the is the smooth. Yes. So and, and 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 somehow in the limiting equation it's like saying that you would have kind of barriers which you can put on top of the above and below of the data which like tells you that uh, the Lipschitz constant cannot increase. Is that one? Yes, exactly. Exactly. Okay. So that Lipschitz uh, uh, constant cannot be increased is uh, follows from the comparison principle. Yeah, because you can shift the uh, the domain, right? So you can shift the function. So if you have the component principle, then certainly you, you, you can estimate the, the Lipschitz norm at time t by the Lipschitz norm at time zero. Ah, you can simply sh shift. Yeah, you can ah, shift. you can simply shift the function, yes. Then you use the component principle. Ah, OK. So the, mechanism, the mechanism that you were alluding to is a simple geometric property. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You think that oh, the, to go from well, the fact that you cannot the fact, the fact that you cannot increase the slope. Okay, it's just this this, this, this the fact that they, they are ordered essentially, right? If I understand correctly. I mean, the fact that the Lipschitz constant cannot increase is hidden in this maximum principle, in the fact yes, that yes, this yes. is ordering of the solution. Yes, yes, exactly. Yes. Solutions. But, I mean, <coughs> to top it up. Yeah. So, so you know what goes wrong with the 2D, with, 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 with the two flows. flows? It happens when the slope is smaller than one, you do have it for two, two phase problem. Uh -huh. But when the slope is bigger than one, yeah. So when when the slope is smaller than one, you actually have the maximum. Principle. So you have the maximum principle for the gradient, even for the even for two two phase, even for the two phase. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Uh -huh. but, but somehow, okay. So like, what what makes me slightly like, okay. So you could simply think. Let me take like, okay, and one a fluid one is which is very heavy and a very 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 very. Tiny. But but one is universal. Is independent of any of the parameters of the system. Yeah, that's what puzzles me. So, like you know, if 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 I, if I put the fluid and nothing on top, then there is the maximum principle at every slope. Yes. But even if I take an ultra light fluid, but you have the pressure in the one phase, you force the pressure. Yeah, yeah, the pressure is that one that place. That's the, that, that. So. Ah, uh, so the one phase is not the limit of the two phase problem in, no. fluid. in which so you're sending you little ah okay okay okay, 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 okay. for example okay if you think about I was naively I, I was naively thinking that you know the no, one no. phase you can recover it as a limit no. of the two phase for example if you, ah, you okay if you have a known graph mm -hmm. okay, for the one phase the problem is well posed mm -hmm. okay uh, okay and if you have okay. two fluids the if you have a known graph okay. Okay, now I mean now I understand. I I I I, I got lost into uh, at a certain point and thought that you know the one phase is kind of the limit of the two phase, but with, with, with the fluid becoming lighter and lighter. But you're telling me that's not. It's really like two different. It's really two different physical models. Yes. 
Okay. So the one phase is closer, would be closer to uh, the limit of a compressible virtue, you no? Know, because you, it's, the pressure is local. Uh -huh. right? Yes. Yes. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yes. That's, uh -huh. yes. And that's and if, you, if you have incompressible uh -huh. two phase. Uh -huh. And the density goes to zero. It's still like you know, there is a non-local pressure. There is still a non-local pressure, so you wouldn't you wouldn't see that. Okay, okay. Now I now I understand. Okay, so I, I was I was a little bit uneasy with this thing that you know <laughs> <laughs> these two phases. I thought okay, but at a certain point, you know, if the fluid is lighter and lighter at a certain point, it shouldn't count, right? I mean, like okay, it should count as if there's nothing. I understand now. Uh, it's it's really like there's there's a modeling difference. A, a, a super light incompressible fluid is really fake. <laughs> <laughs> a super light incompressible. A super light incompressible fluid is uh, yeah okay understand. <laughs> okay. Any more questions? No. Then okay. Thank you.